it's me, I'm back, hey. Hey, it's me, I'm back. <laughs> that was me restarting the highlight. Okay, where were we? First we gotta get some more uh, Green Dutch on. Again, find him at uh, soundcloud.com. Soundcloud, soundcloud.com. What is with me today? Slash the Green Dutch. That's T A G G R E E N D U T C H. Okay, so again, we're looking at. Uh, Again, we're looking at um, how to update this uh, thumbnail that you see when you're looking at a channel and live stream is in there. And there's that live stream thumbnail, and I want to update that now. I want to update it with, preferably, I'd like to update it with uh, an image from the live stream, which I don't know how to do that part yet. But I think we have a pretty good lead on how to update the thumb thumbnail itself. So far that hasn't worked, but I, I still I still believe we're on the right track. We're at least warm. So there's two possible approaches we're looking at right now. Originally I was looking at live broadcasts uh, update because this is a method which I've already used. This is the method that the uh, title command uses to change the title on the live stream. So the bot already does that, and I thought, well, it'd be great if it it was just a variation on that model, but um, actually it looks like it's going to be this, I think this thumbnails set is, um, is really promising. Now this is a post, so I'm going to have to find out, <laughs> literally I'm just going to find out which of the existing YT tools I already have is using a post, because I bet, like, I just, just want to, I guarantee you actually. So. YT tools you will find at the GitHub address, as I said again, way early alpha kit, not ready for anything yet, but um, of uh, Stage Ghost, at least um, staging Stage Ghost, preparing the kit at um, github.com slash diemastermonkey slash Stage Ghost. You can check out my other projects there too. Um, most of them are also pretty crusty, but in there, you will find a collection of these YT tools, is what I refer to them in the documentation. Um, they'll include things like YT check and YT ban, YT modify broadcast. YT modify broadcast is actually the um, is actually the program responsible for updating the title uh, with the title command, or in some cases, in response to the the bot just changing it because um, I'm playing a song or something like that. So it shows the title of the uh, of the currently playing song in the stream title when that is the case. There's also a uh, random, which is um, funny. I mean, you would think, why would you put that in? The, I mean, it's, these are accessible from the chat, right? So, so one of the options for title is random, and it'll just pick from a list of titles that are in the config directory. Um, this isn't so much to be used from the chat, although it obviously can be and, and is, but it's more to be used from back-end tools and uh, user space tools without having to dig into all the other stuff. Okay, so uh, YT uh, single post is kind of a mess. I don't want to mess with that one. cheap band, which is super cheap. That's like such an ugly hack job. I don't even want to look at it. It's that bad. Uh, if I could grab a load of those. All right. I guess YT, YT user subscribe is probably the most recently written, so the most civilized. Let's take a look at that. In fact, I'm just going to start right off. I'm just going to copy YT user subscribe to, um, and you can see it in you know, as if you want to. I'm not sure you want to, but I'm, I'm warning you. It's it ain't pretty. But uh, oh, that's not too bad. 
but it, it's not pretty. And it, oh god, there's some cringeworthy stuff in here too. Anyways, why to use or subscribe is uh, what handles, actually this isn't probably a thing, no, I guess some people would want, would want this. This is the sub command in the channel that actually subscribes back to users' channels if they type sub. <coughs> and optionally, if they are also a subscriber. Actually made that an optional parameter in the configuration directory, whether or not the bot should just subscribe to them when they type sub, or whether it should check to see if they're a subscriber first. I made it optional because, and again, I'm going to give away the game here. Trust me, this is a tip for you if you deployed this bot. Um, I, I found that it's a lot of a lot of people would like use the sub command and then this, the bot would check and find out they were not subscribed and and then they would get angry and they would thumbs down it and then they wouldn't subscribe anyways and they would just type sub like over and over again as if it was going to change or get confused or something it would just keep checking and saying nope you're not a subscriber trust me I'm right and um, and I actually found I just disabled the check and just like fine here if you type sub the bot subs back to you and then, and, and then it just says, hey, I just became your subscriber. You might want to think about subscribing to me. And I found that well over 50% of the people will actually subscribe. So what I'm saying is, if you, um, you know, want someone to sign your petition, it's actually easier if you just give them a cupcake first and then say, while they're eating the cupcake, then you say, hey, want to sign this petition? <laughs> Instead of going, if you sign my petition, I'll give you a cupcake. That's what I'm saying. Before I was like, if you subscribe to the channel, I'll give you a cupcake. It's actually easier if you just give them a cupcake, and then while they're eating, say, hey, subscribe to the channel. Um, so it's it's easier for the bot, and it actually was starting to chew up the API quota because people would just sit there and just type sub over and over again. I have no idea what they think they're accomplishing, but it was annoying. In any case, where back on the oh annotations that reminds me I have a note over here to start playing with annotations because I could totally use those maybe I should be doing this and in that instead of the thumbnail thing all right well we're already in YT user subscribe YT user subscribe does a bunch of the uh, a bunch of the kind of work that we would need to do um, it has pretty simple to set API endpoint and does some other things that I don't need in this instance and handles the token thing properly not really the way I want it to do it you know that's correct it's using the OAuth token and not the API key um, so when you use the OAuth token it goes into a different, into a different quota bucket um, API quota bucket for your application there's a bucket for requests that are on behalf of the application and a user, and there are, is a bucket for requests that are on behalf of the application only. And the bucket for your application's own requests, I don't know how big it is, but they are obviously they're more scalable if it's if all the requests are under um, the user. So, um, so do it that way and on the API keys as, as much as possible. And there's a few cases where you'd be like, well, this is a one-off thing that only happens one time during setup or something like that. Um, or rarely, you know, then just then you can just use the key, but it, I mean, it's, it still is a scale, scaling issue there. Hey, it's 2.30 in the morning here, you know, by the way. I have all this geek sesh is like crazy late at night because I'm an insomniac. So, uh, yeah, sometimes I uh, get distracted. I'm still looking at this code. No, this is good. Um, I'm still not sure if I, I want to do this. Look, it's actually already broken um, the description, which I'll have to fix now. I can fix it. This is going to be a little bit hacky, though, because this isn't a, a situation that I've uh, that I've, I've written to handle. 
the description the title's only ever updated um, you know from the bot or from the interface never from that YouTube API try it explore thing so only in that instance is the description field going to be blown away in other instances I, I have accommodated uh, that situation so I'm going to take that backup copy of the description that you saw me make before we started playing with the API Explorer, remember? I was like, I have a feeling I'm about to blow away my description field. And sure enough, that's what happened. Okay, so I'm going to do like this. I'm so embarrassed about this. This is going to be terrible. Um, I'm just going to, I'm actually going to market a trip. Oh, OS. Uh, 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 minus right to the drone tv description field i'm removing everybody's right access to that to that file now i can safely update the title with the title command and it won't get the latest here's the thing so the title command what it does really quickly is download a copy of the current description um, <clears throat> and then upload it along with the title which you have to do so i'm going to set title random again and we're going to see what happens. It should restore the description. Because <clears throat> even though it's going to try to download the latest version, which is broken, which we don't want because it's blank, there we go. It fixed it already. It is super fast. And yes, something I have discovered that nobody knows yet. You know what? Maybe I should just go to the description thing. Okay. We're going to stick a pin in the thumbnails thing. Hey, look. I'm not, I'm not retreating here. There's still another half of it to be figured out, right? Even if this works, and I highly suspect it's the thumbnails set um, call that we're going to use to do this, that I'm going to use to do this. I say we because you're watching this, right? Otherwise, I'm, otherwise I'm, well, now we've gone into a recursive thing. But <clears throat> it's got to be, it's got to be this one because the live broadcast update thing has already been working, and I'm using the scare quotes around working because it is working, but it's not changing the thumbnail and, and blowing away the description field. So two the things we don't want and, uh, and none of the things we do want. So thumbnail set takes a video ID and it uses this thumbnail resource. It's the same resource you specify in the broadcast update method. So I'm pretty sure this is it. I'm pretty confident. But I mean, there's still another half to figure out, which is how to get an image from the live stream. I might have to do that myself on this end. Yes, I may very well have to do that. Yeah, on the bot side. It might have to take its own screenshot of what it's doing. Or maybe prepare um, some other sort of image, like, you know, an image that's reflective of what's going on on that channel, but might not necessarily be a picture of, of the channel. You know, I'm just like, so out of curiosity. The live streams. How are you guys doing? Chime in on the chat. I always say, and then like I don't engage the chat. Kind of notorious for not engaging the chat at all. People get angry and they'll thumbs down you and stuff. Hey, who said that the channels should be done a certain way? I'm doing my channel my way. Thumbnails, videos. Um, so, I mean, it is a video. The live stream is a video. So, I don't think it has to be any part of like live stream or anything like that. There's a list method of the video's object. Well, list. I mean, I guess the video's object. That's a get. And among its properties are. What? Max height? Max height? Why is there a max height? Oh, they're talking about the size of the videos returned by the call. Man. Now, uh, what I want is for in the response body, I want there to be a thumbnail. And I want, when it is a thumbnail of a live stream, I want it to be reflective of the live stream. Wait, this probably doesn't exist. <coughs> If this existed, it would be a checkbox in the user in the dashboard anyways. It would be like, well, just have the 
just have the thumbnail, you know, be my live stream, right? It would be a checkbox over here somewhere, and it's definitely not. So it's, I have to get the image on this side. Thumbnails is a is a resource description. Okay, remember so. It's not like there's a thumbnails download. I'm pretty sure. I'll take a look at this live streaming thing again because there could be something specific to the live streaming objects. So I'm digging through the fields return in a live streams list uh, API call. Uh, no, this is this is this is the wrong this is the wrong corridor. <laughs> I should have taken a left to Albuquerque. Okay. So this is the Google uh, API Explorer. It's just like it's on the YouTube section. This is kind of lower, uh, lower level. <sighs> lower level, uh, you know, version of the Try It API thing. I'm trying to read this at the same time. <laughs> I shouldn't do that. Funny thing is, there's like a, a storm playing on Drone Sound TV in the sound effects, but there's also a storm here in in real life that's bleeding over on the mic. I think it's funny. Yeah, so close. Look, there's a videos list. In the videos list method, there's a video streams object. I was like, please be in there. You get the height and width in pixels. Oh, that's cool. You get the codec. Good luck with that. Darn. Ah, no, that was, I mean, that wasn't really even close in theory. Audio streams object looks uh, fairly similar, by the way, in case you were curious. <sighs> nope. 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 There's nothing, nothing in there. I mean, of course there wouldn't be. But uh, why isn't there? Don't they? Don't they know what's on the screen? They do know what's showing, but it's not. It's being rendered on the client side through a codec. What am I thinking? This is pointless. There's absolutely no way that they're going to have this. They're not going to have an image screenshot of a... You know what? I just had 
the craziest idea. It is actually possible to take, I've already looked at this and I've already sketched out how I would do it. Um, to take a, a piece of a live stream, um, I forget what they call it, but yeah, you're totally allowed to do that uh, with the live stream. I think it's actually a live stream object. Let's find this. I think it's actually the live stream object itself. Yeah, in the live streams object, I think you can update one. So my thinking here is, maybe one way I can do this without putting the onus on the bot is to use the YouTube API to, one, um, take a, a very, very short recording of the current live stream starting now and ending now. Get it? So like a five second recording, whatever. And letting YouTube process that and using its automatically generated thumbnail as the thumbnail for the live stream. I think that's doable. I'm looking at the live broadcast object. There is a, what was I gonna do before I got distracted by this again? Oh, I'm still on this thing, that's right. I said I was gonna do the description thing which is going to be a lot more, a lot more valuable. So I can change the description. And when I first did that, it was only because I had to, right? Interesting. So this is Slate's, actually. Live broadcast control. So live broadcast control only, um, only relates to the Slate's thing, whatever the hell that is. I mean, yeah, I know what that is. That's the thing that goes clink, you know, on a movie, you know, when they're shooting a scene. Cut, you know, that thing. I just, I don't know why I need that here. But maybe I do need it. Wait a minute. Maybe the, whole set, maybe the slate is how they make a, uh, uh, oh, wait. How do they make it? See, so here's the thing. When, here's how I think about this kind of stuff when I'm looking at my bot and I'm thinking like, hey, what kind of stuff could I do? You know, besides the just like pie in the sky, in the sky stuff, that, that's fun too, but but one way you can think about it is you can look at something like, like this. Or it's on the screen right now. This is the live streaming dashboard. It's all right. It's one of like three live streaming dashboards in YouTube that all seem to be competing with each other. But, uh, so, police up your dashboards, you two, come on. Uh, anyways, in here, uh, it has like a bunch of things you can do. You can set options, you can set cards, and stuff like that. When I see stuff like this, and, uh, and realize that I'm using it in a web browser, and I think how cool that is, and I go, well, this, this like probably 99% of this is API stuff. I mean, we could dig into the code, but that's obviously not the way to do it. But, I mean, back in the old days, he used to do that, but now the code is crazy complicated. Yeah, and it's all compressified and minified and stuff. And actually, it's pretty readable. Why is there... Did you guys see that? What's that? What is that? This is going on Twitch, uh, on Twitter. All right. Well, sometimes you do look at the comments. <laughs> and then, wait, maybe, is that mine? Is that from my code? Comment ID, moderator name? Oh, it's man by. No, this is like, oh my god, they do their stuff the same way I do my stuff. They have like a bunch of replaceable parameters. And in this case, the parameters are like not replaced. Yes, I know I like scrolling. Like, I'm looking for that William Shakespeare. There's an ASCII William Shakespeare. Just 
hold, stop the presses, okay? Hold everything. There's an ASCII William Shakespeare in the YouTube.com live dashboard source code, and there it is. 191.61. What is this doing here? Hey, is this mine? Where did this come from? That's not mine. 